Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. It's 6.30 on the dot. B.C. teachers are set to vote today on their union's proposal to end their ongoing strike and reopen schools. But the government has flatly refused binding arbitration to reach a settlement. Greg Harper joins us now live from BCTF headquarters in Vancouver with more. Greg. Good morning, Jody. Uh, today, support workers, members with QP, will likely be able to uh, return to work at their schools as teachers likely will not be on the picket line as thousands will be voting today, voting on ending the strike should the government agree to binding arbitration, even though the education minister has said twice now that this is not an option. Meanwhile, labor leaders in our province are expected to announce today financial aid for striking teachers. The BC Federation of Labor and the Nurses Union are expected to make separate announcements both in support of public school teachers. Also, 13 union leaders wrote the Premier yesterday urging the government to agree to binding arbitration. We should have the result of the teachers' vote at some point tonight. Jody? All right, we'll be looking forward to that. Thanks so much, Greg Harper, reporting live for us this morning. Should be noted that our political analyst, uh, Kim Emerson, is going to join us at 810 to discuss this. BC's books are looking stable, not spectacular, according to the Liberal government, but the province's extra money will not be used to pay teachers. While announcing first quarter results, the finance minister projected a surplus of $266 million for the fiscal year. That's $82 million more than expected. But Mike Young rejected the idea of using it to settle the teachers' dispute, saying that would further strain the BC taxpayer. The money is there for admittedly modest wage increases and modest wage increases for, for teachers as well. The money is not there for uh, two times that amount uh, in the case of teachers and the cascading effect uh, that could well have for other negotiations that are yet to uh, come. I certainly believe when you look at the contingencies, when you look at the surplus, when you look at the opportunity to actually find a settlement, I think the resources can be found. The Finance Ministry says it would take $316 million to give teachers what they're currently asking for. So hypothetically, pay for that, it says a, f a fuel tax of five cents a litre would be needed or an extra $200 on average property taxes. New numbers suggest annual tuition fees at Canadian universities have tripled over the last 20 years and are expected to rise another 13% over the next four. That means your average student will be paying nearly $7,800 a year for tuition. According to the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, Ontario has the highest projected tuition fees, expected to reach almost $9,500. The lowest are in Newfoundland and Labrador at $2,900. In BC, students are expected to eventually start paying about $6,100 a year for their post-secondary education. Arson is suspected in an overnight fire at East Vancouver Elementary School. This was Chief McKenna Elementary, located in Penticton Street and East 2nd Avenue, just before 2 o'clock this morning. One classroom is heavily damaged, but firefighters managed to keep the flames from spreading. A Langley dog walker accused of letting six animals die in her care is due back in court next month. Emma Paulson had her lawyer appear on her behalf while she stayed outside the courtroom. Last May, Paulson initially told police the six dogs were stolen from her truck, but she later admitted they had died in the back of her vehicle on a hot day. Paulson has not yet entered a plea to five counts of animal cruelty and one count of public mischief. It was definitely a horrible mistake for her to do that day but from our understanding it's not the first time that she's left those dogs alone in her truck and that's you know it, w it wasn't a time of oh this is the first time mistake it was a ticking time bomb of when the dogs were gonna fall substance to heat exhaustion a not so family friendly statue has now been removed from an area near the bcc clark's skytrain station in east vancouver the city says the x-rated display was not a piece of city commissioned work. The statue stood about eight to nine feet tall, but its size wasn't the only thing that raised some eyebrows. The artwork was removed by city crews at around three o'clock yesterday afternoon, and while some people have their suspicions, it's still not known who is responsible for putting it up in the first place.